as as uh, 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 are these is that lower age for the volunteers or for the people no, who are there? No, it's for the volunteers. Okay, right. all right, right. So then, so the, for, the, for everything else, you would welcome people of any oh, yeah, age, uh, assuming they have some maturity. I presume. Correct. <laughs> right, because you know one of the things that we look for. Remember, we are dealing with a vulnerable population. And we're very protective of the individuals that we bring on as volunteers because we want to make sure that those people are not only sensitive to the needs of the elderly, but respectful of the needs of the elderly. Well, I read just recently in the newspaper that as of now, Orleans Parish is up to like 75% of the population we had before Katrina, which would seemed to mean that you would have fewer people needing your attention. However, we have an aging population. That's correct. So we, here we have uh, two things working against you. You have fewer people to draw from the community for help, probably less money to be able to get from the community, and possibly greater need. Am I saying that correctly? You, you are. You are saying that. Uh, you're saying that right. Uh, New Orleans uh, has uh, many social service agencies that run the gamut from children to seniors, uh, and you, you can fill in the gaps there of all the different programs. And uh, in terms of individuals to provide additional funding for these programs outside of their uh, regular channels of funding, it's a very small pool. So uh, we all, the different agencies, are competing with those particular volunteer dollars to, to, to be able to supplement their budgets to provide services. Other than the, uh, the federal money that comes along with the mandate, uh, are you able to get grants from... We do. We, uh, we, we write uh, and uh, have some competitive grants that we've been able to receive from different uh, corporations over the years. In fact, Philip Morris... Uh, a number of years ago, uh, before they changed hands, provided us with a grant of a hundred thousand. Uh, That's very for two good. Two years straight. They may and, feel guilty that some of those seniors uh, have lung problems. Well, that, that's true. <laughs> but that particular money went to our Meals on Wheels program. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in fact, there was a challenge grant uh, when I first started. Uh, Mark Morial was mayor. He uh, challenged our committee, our aging uh, committee, that if we came up with money, he'd match it. And we went and found a grant for 100000 He had to give us another 100000 Okay, That worked out. We were able to eliminate some people off our waiting list for Meals on Wheels. But that was back in the 90s, and this is 2000. It's a whole different ballgame. All right. Well, the, the, the way that I became aware of you and your organization was your re recent letter to the editor of the Times Picayune, and in your letter, uh, in fact, the the caption of the letter, which I'm sure you didn't write, says "City lags on senior services," and you say in here the New Orleans Council on Aging is experiencing an increase in requests for services for the elderly, and you're anticipating an, a wave of increase as the population grows older. Tell me about the uh, uh, about your ability to fill all of these needs. Well, uh, demographic wise, this country is getting older, yes. and we all understand that. Uh, we, People can see us on the screen. They can see us on the screen, <laughs> and, and not only that. If you you look at the population trends, uh, we are having less. Uh, there are, there are less births, but in this country, but and also people are living longer. Uh, prior to the storm, we had 18 senior citizen centers in the city of New Orleans. Uh, after the storm, we only have 10. Right. Of those 18, five of those centers were in city buildings. Uh, in fact, one where I uh, started uh, my career, uh, not too far from here in Carrollton. Uh, which was one of the uh, leading centers before the storm, along with two other ones, one in the Lord Ninth Ward and one that we had just opened up May of uh, 2005 in Pontchartrain Park, which was becoming the fastest growing senior citizen center in the city. And when you say they were in city buildings, does that mean that you were rent-free? No, we weren't rent-free. We had to pay rent to the city. All right. Uh, 
and they were in facilities going back to the program where I first started. It was the first building that was designed by the city of New Orleans to be a senior citizen center. So subsequently, from 1980 coming forward to now, the senior citizen centers that are in city buildings, and we're talking about Central City, we're also talking about Arthur Monday that's located on the West Bank. The particular structure and the way it architecturally as it was designed, it was designed for seniors. We had a lot of filtered light because as you get older, it's not uh, psychologically right to put an individual in a building without light. Yes. All right. And we found that out through uh, through uh, through some medical uh, experiments that as you get older, people need to have a lot of light. Okay. Mainly because as you get older, you start to think about the end of life, and then when you think about the end of life, you're in a coffin. Right. Well, or or, or, or something is equally as bad. Right. So, <laughs> so instead of putting an individual in a building without light, you try to put a person in a building with a lot of light and bright colors. All right. It helps sure. them out. All right. These buildings were designed as senior centers. All right. They function. They were uh, they were real good programs, but after the storm. Uh, and, you know, the city is telling us that it's because of FEMA. They didn't get the proper reimbursement. They've been sitting for four years. We get phone calls on a daily basis. People stop me in the street, uh, not just Monday through Friday, in the grocery store, at church, wherever they see me, because they know I've been working in this field for a long time. For a long time, yeah. and they said, "When are we going to get our senior citizen?" But well, what you're back? saying is that those city-owned buildings that you're referring to have not been restored. They have not been restored. Are, the, are there are there plans in the works? Well, do they, do they have FEMA money to do it? Or it what? is it is it is my understanding that there are plans in the works. And in fact, I'm, I'm supposed to have a meeting soon uh, with somebody in the administration to talk about the timetable that has been set to start to work on these centers. But, you know, after four years, you get a little frustrated. Uh, of course. Uh, like a lot of things that goes on in this town, you you know, you get promises and your promises. And from my standpoint, I am answerable to the elderly population. I'm their advocate. Uh, and sure. when a person comes to you and says, look, it's been four years, where's my senior citizen center? Can you can you help us some kind of way, Mr. Howard, to get our senior citizen center? Back? And they 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 were not aware that you were doing everything you that well. You they know that I'm do. doing everything I can. You know, and I tell them you need to call your your council person. You need yeah. to talk to the mayor. But let me ask you: be, having almost only half as many centers as you had before, and I would think transportation may be a problem for elderly people. And if there are fewer locations, then people would have to travel farther Correct. to get to get. Is that a problem? It is. It is. Do uh, you provide any kind of transportation for people? The senior centers themselves have vans that they utilize to pick up people and bring back and forth. The only uh, particular program that we operate is on the West Bank. 